This effect was created with a free plugin for Adobe After Effects, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. You may recognize this from Oppenheimer or Logan, where there are both very intense mental breakdown scenes. The secret ingredient will be this free chromatic aberration plugin, so I'll post a link down below and feel free to follow along. To get started, let's begin by rotoscoping. We're doing this so that the background can be warped more than the foreground, kind of like a bokeh effect. Once you're done, make sure you have a foreground layer and a background layer. Duplicate the background with Shift D and hide the one below. On the visible layer, let's add a set matte effect, setting the layer to the foreground and enabling effects and masks. Let's also invert it so that we get the opposite of the rotoscope. The reason we do this is we don't want the foreground colors to bleed into the background. So let's fill this transparent area with the correct colors. On a new adjustment layer, let's add a curves effect, setting it to alpha, and then bring the control point at the start to the top. Next, let's select the background and duplicate it again. On the one below, let's add a fast box blur. This is where your brain might explode. Try blurring it and you can see that the pixels leak inwards like a spilled bucket of paint. We're gonna do this a few times. So let's duplicate that layer and on the one beneath, let's blur it incrementally higher. And let's do it again and again using higher values each time. If you look closely, there's still this weird area. So let's duplicate the foreground and on the original one, let's add a matte choker effect. Instead, let's invert the choke so that it grows a bit and then it covers up that weird area. But yeah, look how cool that looks. And if you move the foreground around, you can see it looks kind of okay. It doesn't look like a, a doubled up image. So now let's add a new adjustment layer. I will be renaming it to Warping and then bringing it below the foreground layer. Now for the magic, let's add the Production Crate Chromatic Aberration plugin. Once again, it's free, it's beautiful, and it's fast. And there's a bunch of fun things you can do like twisting and scaling to create all sorts of combinations. It's part of the LaForge suite, which is an incredible collection of plugins that I highly recommend. Since we need an aberration on the background and the foreground, we're actually going to create a null layer to control both at the same time. On its own, this slider control doesn't do anything, but we can rename it to Wiggle Strength and a second one to just Strength. Now let's connect it. Go to the warping layer and alt click on the aberration and center properties. Next, let's go down and find the expressions that have now been exposed. On the second expression, type in wiggle open bracket 40 comma and then use the pick whip to select the wiggle strength. 40 represents how many times per second we shake. The first expression is a lot more simple, just empty it and connect it to the strength slider. Now if you mess with these parameters, you can start to see it happening, but the foreground still looks very clean. So let's select the chromatic aberration effect and copy it. Next, on the top, let's add a new adjustment layer and paste the effect inside. Now we don't want the foreground to be as blurred as the background, so let's expose and modify the expressions a bit. On the aberration property, let's simply multiply it by 0.1, and then of course you can increase or decrease this value depending on how blurred you want the foreground to be. So now you have this really cool setup where the null controls the strength of both aberrations. Chris is doing some awesome acting here, so I'm actually going to keyframe the strength of the aberration over time so that it looks like he's responding to the pain that it's causing him. Now, if you don't like the colors that this filter produces, you can actually duplicate the background layer and set its blending mode to color. But this is completely optional depending on the style that you want to go for. Now this is looking pretty damn good. We're gonna wrap it up with some very subtle and high frequency camera shake. There are many ways to do this, but the quick way will be to add an adjustment layer and add a distort transform effect. 
Next, let's alt click on the position property and in the expression, let's type in wiggle, open bracket, 40, comma, and then let's use the pick whip to select the strength slider. Now, of course, this will expose the edge of the frame. So let's increase the scale as well to compensate for that. But now you're done. You're going to find this useful whenever your characters are scared, intoxicated, poisoned, mind controlled or just stressed out. If you ever need any help, feel free to comment down below or join our Discord. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.